Hello, Roadrunner fans. This is JJ Perez with Inside Runner Sports, and welcome back to the 13 Questions podcast, where I sit down and talk to different people at UTSA about 13 questions on random things involving sports, life, and miscellaneous. Uh, The kind of rub is... For those new to this podcast, I ask the same 13 questions to different people at UTSA. So welcome back. This is season three of the podcast, and I am excited to uh, run it back again. Uh, I was almost not going to do it this year. My schedule has been a little bit unique over the last calendar year, so uh, I'm trying to navigate those challenges while continuing to cover UTSA for Inside Runner Sports, as well as kind of get this podcast thing rolling. So I do appreciate everybody's kind words and support and listening. Um, So without further ado, here we go. Episode one, season three of the 13 Questions podcast is with UTSA head coach Jeff Trailer. We recorded this last week at uh, American Conference Media Days and you know, it's pretty interesting conversation with Coach. He did a ton of interviews this day before he got to me. So um, if he sounds worn out, maybe he is a little bit. I, I know he was coming off the Texas High School Coaches Convention in San Antonio. He flew to Media Day uh, for the second day. And when I tell you he was maybe the most popular request at AAC Media Day, uh, I mean, he did not say no. We had he was set up with different radio shows, podcasts, TV shows, and he got them all in. So I think we ended up talking to him at the end of a long stretch of interviews. So anyway, here we go. UTSA head coach Jeff Trailer kicking off season three of the Thirteen Questions podcast. Here with UTSA head coach Jeff Trailer for season three of my podcast, Thirteen Questions. Coach, I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, just going to jump into some of these questions, brand new questions for a brand new season. So first question, where did you grow up and what do you like about that place? Gilmer, Texas, where I grew up. Those are my people. I mean, uh, I've gotten very close to many people in San Antonio, but that's, you know, we're going on five years together. Yeah. Where, you know, back home, home is home. And, you know, I also got to coach in my hometown. Uh, a lot of my classmates are school board members there. Or, or administrators or teachers and uh, my family's still all back there it's just that's where my people are yep awesome question number two what personality trait that you have are you most proud of I would say uh, my uh, ability to stay loyal okay uh, be a good friend be a good husband be a good dad uh, you know, serve. Uh, I, I would hope that's what people would say about me. Yeah, where do you think that came from? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I had good parents. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess people that have been loyal to me. Yeah. It's really uh, resonated to me when I see how people stood with me in some tough times in my life. Yeah. Some tough losses in my life. Yeah. Uh, you don't forget those people. And uh, I would want people to say that I've been that for them. Right. So I would say my life experiences probably yeah. of just seeing how it made me feel. And that's a choice, right? Because you could easily decide on case-by-case basis not to do that, right? So. And, it, and it's tough because I would also say that's my greatest weakness as well. Yeah. Uh, because maybe there are times I should cut bait mm-hmm. uh, with certain players maybe or people. Uh, and I, I'm one of those guys that will. I don't want to say a ride or die guy, but I, I'm I'm pretty. I'll hang in there with you. Have you uh, ever been stuck on an elevator? Once in San Antonio. Okay. Many many uh, years ago at coaching school, and the elevator was halfway stuck. Oh wow. And the door opened, and we could jump out to the floor, oh, and I'm God. the only one that did it. The other, <laughs> I was so claustrophobic and so scared. The other three stayed in the elevator, my coaching buddies, uh-huh. and I just should not have done that. Oh, it's a very wow. stupid choice, but I, I lived. You got to so get I'm, out of I'm, there. I, I did, and I called help, and we got my buddies so, out. So thinking about that experience, what 
current UTSA football player or coach or admin do you think you would least like to be stuck in an ele- elevator with? Oh, what a loaded question. <laughs> I would not want to be in there with Joe Evans because he's, he's freaking huge. He's yeah. 6'4", 340, and I get claustrophobic, so I want my space. Yeah, I think uh, Oscar said, both Oscar and Lisa said you because you were claustrophobic. <laughs> uh, question number four, what is a quality or skill that you envy in another uh, head football coach? Um, I wish I was as good and quick. Behind the mic is Trent Dilfer. I listen to yeah. Trent quite a yeah. bit. You know, he's been a TV guy, though. Yeah. He's really good at that he's kind of stuff. Off the cuff, he's real great. Yeah, I, you know, I wish I was better. I'm too honest and too real, which yeah. gets you in trouble uh, when you answer the questions correctly. Yeah. I wish I could avoid questions better. I'm not good at coach talk. Uh, I don't feel like uh, I'm, I'm just too darn honest at yeah. times, honestly. What is one of the less glamorous aspects of being a football coach? I'd say the control of the mind. Uh, your mind is just never in the moment. Uh, it's a frustrating thing. Today's my son's birthday. You know, Jake's 27. I'm just trying to find a picture of him to put out on Twitter for him and get him on the phone and. Uh, you know, the, the time element, yeah. whether it's your mind or whether it's just stuff you're responsible for doing. Yeah. Uh, you, you can control your mind, obviously. Yeah. But it seems like this job has controlled my mind too much. Yeah. Um, I would say that. I wish I could get my mind to rest yeah. more. And I know that's probably a spiritual battle as well, uh, that I need to turn that over a little bit. Uh, but. That I wish I could get peace in my mind. There's a physical element to that too, right? With the like the actual schedule and the demands of the hours too. And I would say, as I've gotten older, I felt that a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, like I did the first radio interview today, and they said to me, "Coach, are you all right? You seem like I'm like I'm good. I'm actually probably a little tired. Just we had THSCA. Yeah. You know, all week, thirteen thousand, my very best friends, and then you fly in there late last night and get get to doing all this you know it takes its toll on you yep. a little bit yep. so physically and mentally yep uh, next question is a wild card custom question for you I, I i noticed a few weeks ago you announced or someone in your family announced you're having a grand a grandkid congratulations what, what do you think that dynamic is going to look like for you and do, does you think it'll change you any it's a great question it's something carrie and i've talked about a lot uh, Mickey Jacob trailer uh, is supposed to be born on November the 8th this year. Right in the middle of the season. And it's it's a bye week, thank yeah. goodness. Yeah. Uh, we'll have just played Memphis. Uh, it'll be interesting to see when I come home and Carrie's in New Orleans all the time and it's just me at the house coaching ball, yeah. how that's going to affect me uh, moving forwards. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, question number seven, if you were not a football coach, what do you think you'd be doing? What other interests do you have? Is it another sports field? Or what, what, what do you think you'd be doing if you didn't go down this path? Uh, probably some type of motivational speaking. Uh, something to help coaches in some way. Yeah. Something to serve those guys in some way. Uh, I, I've thought about that. If there's ever life after football, what is that going to look like for Jeff Trailer? And I can't imagine me just... Uh, hitting a golf ball every day and reading a book and swimming. Uh, I have a feeling I'm going to be involved with people uh, until the Lord takes me home. Yep. How much uh, How much media coverage of football do you consume, stuff like this? Is it just stuff around your team mostly? or I try to not listen to any of it. Uh, there are certain guys in the business I have respect for. Uh, maybe a SEC Media Day or a Big yep. 12 Media Day, I will go pull up their stuff yep. just to hear how their message comes across. But I don't want to get too influenced by too many people or too many media types because I want my answers to always be authentic and true. And I don't want to be a copycat. But I, I would be lying if I didn't say I didn't listen to Matt Rule when he yep. speaks or Joey McGuire when he speaks, uh, guys that, uh, you know, Mac Brown when he speaks, who I've listened to forever. Um, there's just guys in the business I have a lot of respect for that I try to listen to as much as possible. What's uh, your updated opinion of NIL? It's been a few years now. It seems like it evolves every year a little bit. Do, does it need to be fixed? And, I mean, do we even need to fix it? I don't think so. I think there are 
the schools having the ability to revenue share now yeah. should release some of the pressure off the boosters and the head coaches. Uh, I'm excited to see what that looks like for UTSA. That's heavy. Yeah. Uh, when I get back uh, tomorrow, I've got a lunch, NIL. I've got dinner, NIL. Those are two moments where I would usually be with my family yeah. uh, that I won't be with my family or my friends. Uh, I'm not complaining because uh, that's just part of the job right now, but there has to be some type of relief or you're going to see a lot of coaches um, get out of the business probably sooner than they really wanted to. Yeah. Yep. Question number 12, 11 of 13, what is currently number one on your bucket list, personal, not, not work-related? Yeah, I really want to do more nature, more hikes. Really? Uh, I want to see some things uh, in our country. I mean, I've never been to Yellowstone, uh, Jackson Hole. I've heard about that. I'd like to, I'd like to get outside and, and see God's nature uh, with my kids uh, while I'm still healthy and young yeah. enough yeah. to do all those kind of things. So I've got a few things uh, on the calendar for next year. Uh, I know Jake, my middle son, that's very important to him. Yeah. My daughter is turned into a diehard uh, Mets fan in New York. <laughs> she feels bad for the Mets, so I'd like to take her to a game. Yeah. Obviously, those kind of things. Uh, I'd like to go see Caitlin Clark play with her. I'd uh-huh. like for JC to be yeah. there and watch that. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, Jordan and I get to share a lot of things. We have sports. Yeah. You know, so we do a lot sports-wise. Yeah. But I'd like to be more intentional, probably with Jake and JC, on some things they enjoy. What's an opinion of UTSA football that you have that you don't think is shared by others? I don't know. I guess the, 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 my optimism for the potential for growth, yeah. that I'm not as worried about NIL if we'll all get involved. I yeah. think we've all got to wrap our mind around it's the city of San Antonio versus the other cities. Yeah. And I understand very well that the Longhorns, the Aggies, the Baylor Bears are in our city. But everybody in our city does understand how important UTSA football is to our city. And I think the potential for us is unlimited. Uh, I think in the next 20 years, you're going to see us grow uh, at the same rate we've grown the last 13 years, which that thing has just been an amazing story. Second to last question here, beyond winning, what is the best way to measure success in football? Well, I tell my players all the time, the definition of success for us is a peace of mind knowing we've done our very best. And there's a way it's supposed to look and the way we're supposed to carry and conduct ourselves. Uh, And when we do that, that is success. Uh, When we don't, we've got to be honest about it, reevaluate why we got put in this position, fix it, and move forward. Last question for you here for the 13 Questions podcast. Coach, this is your starting your fifth year here with the Roadrunners. When uh, there's been a, a couple of close calls, maybe you weren't going to be here this long. Kind of taking a look back, is it everything you thought it would be, this journey? And what's, like, what is success moving forward? What's the long-term goal here? I, I know you mentioned plenty of times that you could retire here, you could win a lot of football games. Do you have any regrets? Do you ever think about the road less traveled? I mean, you could have took that Lamar job if it wasn't for the timing, right? You have to decide, do you believe or not believe right. in what I say I believe? And if I really do believe in Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, I really do believe the Lord has a plan for me, uh, and his plans are for me to prosper. Yeah. And uh, I know that when I've made decisions in my life, when my wife was happy, and I felt like I was honoring the Lord. Uh, my life has been more peaceful. Did I know NIL was coming? No. Did I know Transfer Portal was coming? No. Has that become way more heavy? There's no doubt that has. Uh, but I don't have a crystal ball. Yeah. Who's to say as, as bad as it might look right now, the difference between us and certain schools and that, who's to say in two years that doesn't flip and that doesn't change? Yeah. So I think we've all got to trust. Proverbs 3, 5, trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. You've just got to decide what do you really believe. Yeah. Am I a human? Do I have flesh? Yes, there are moments I ask myself, am I being too loyal? Uh, should I have left? Should I leave? There's no doubt those things enter my mind. Uh, but when I try to challenge my faith, uh, I know that God has a plan for me, and I feel very confident. As far as what this job's been, it's been more than I could ever imagine. 
it's been incredible. The friends that I've met, the people that I've get to, the journey, the winning, the losing, all of it. It's just been uh, way more than I would ever dreamed. But I'll go back to something I said the day I got hired. You know, your, your dreams should always be so large that your prayer life has to match it. So when your dreams come true, no human can take credit for it. And I really feel strongly of people that have looked at my journey would say, you know, there's no way he could have done that. that that's got to be the Lord helping that goofball. Is, is there really no ceiling for this football program? I mean, I, is, it, is it college football playoff? Is that, you know, a realistic thing there? There's no doubt. I mean, do you think we can win against Kennesaw at home? Yeah. Do you think we can beat Texas State on the road? Texas on the road, let's be honest, yeah. that's going to take a miracle, right? right? Do you think we can win against Houston Christian yeah. at home? Can we go to East Carolina and win? Like, ask yourself those same questions. Yeah. You all and I both know we can do all those things. Yeah. We can also not do any of those things. Right. But, yes, we have the ability to do that. The question is, are the 2024 Roadrunners going to do it or not? Yep. That's what makes us stay up all night, and we can't wait. Yep, I guess we'll find out. Coach Trailer, appreciate you joining the podcast. Thanks a bunch. You're the best, JJ. Right. You're a good friend, and you do a great job yep. as well. God bless. Thanks, Jeff. I always appreciate Coach Trailer uh, doing the podcast and doing extra stuff. Uh, pretty interesting conversation there. Uh, I do find it interesting that, you know, the the narrative that, you know, he almost left, which maybe he almost did last year, and, you know, kind of what he says about wanting to stay in San Antonio. I believe that, knowing what I know about Jeff and his family and, you know, what he wants to do. I could certainly see him retiring. I could also certainly see him, see, see him going to a Power 5 school, so I appreciate him you know, opening up on that aspect that I guess the kind of biggest takeaway is this open talk about uh, competing for the uh, CFP playoff spot. And I think that is a huge, big thing for UTSA that can really propel the program into, quite frankly, a different stratosphere, another level of exposure uh, more revenue generation, and that could be the beginning of, you know, something special. UTSA has already grown so much in the time that Jeff Trailer has been here, even since before he's gotten here. So, uh, pretty good story for the Roadrunners. Uh, seems like Coach Trailer is in, in for the long haul, but we'll see how this season goes. Again, pretty interesting conversation. I appreciate all of you guys listening. Be- feel free to share, rate, review. Uh, any feedback, any suggestions, send them my way. Uh, up next next week on the podcast, a uh, special guest, UTSA Athletic Director Lisa Campos, a rare sit down with her. So tune back in then. Thanks.